Hi, this is Paul, and a lot of you will recognize the person with me today. This is Sally Joe. Those of you who came to the Thunder Bay Conference might have gotten a tiny little book that Mark Lefebvre, who you either love or he annoys you, um, was in the back handing out. <laughs> and um, Mark Lefebvre of Navigating Patterns, that's his YouTube channel. And um, and so Sally Joe contacted me and says, oh, we should talk again. So um, I thought that was great. Our, I thought we've had terrific conversations, Sally Joe. And um, so thanks for getting in touch with me. And uh, what's going on? Oh, I'm 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 all the way back to the Baptist church. My folks sort of think they got kicked out of, but now I'm not sure if that really happened. <laughs> well, you bet for those of the for those who haven't kept up, actually I do have a Sally Joe playlist on my YouTube. So I will I, I will this slot episode. this one into the Sally Joe playlist. So there um, you go. You are you are one of you are one of the randos that have um, have made regular return appearances and um, and have been generous to share your story. So why don't you give us a little summary for those who haven't seen all the previous videos? Well, about how uh, we got here. Yeah, in uh, 2019, when I was five months pregnant, or maybe it was 2018. No, it was 2018. I don't know. Years ago, shortly years ago. Um, I moved to Florida when I was pregnant with my son, and I started attending a Greek Orthodox church at the end of my street after he was born. And um, we were in Florida, wasn't really where we wanted to be. It was kind of a, ah, we're going to go broke move. And so we moved and we quit going broke. And that portion was a total success. But when you're from South Dakota, and the majority of your relatives are in South Dakota, Florida's kind of almost the furthest in the continental U.S. you can get away from there. <laughs> and that's not the best. And then I attended, because once my son was born, I I just had to go back to church. It just didn't feel optional. And I've been at, I've been at weird places with where I am. Um, but I thought, Hey, I've heard about the Greek Orthodox church. At least I'll show up and it'll be pretty. I went there for over a year and then COVID broke out and they were going to wear masks. I couldn't do it. I, and, and then I realized, Oh, this is cause at the time I thought, cause I was a Protestant. And then I ended up going to a Pentecostal church until I left Florida. And then um, in, uh, 2021, so last year in July, um, my husband had to take an overseas job because the contracts went south in Florida too. And, um, we had had a deal since before we got married that if we had kids and he had to go work overseas, I got to move home. So, uh, he went overseas and I packed up our house and I moved home and uh, managed to get a place. It was kind of an ordeal. I spent a couple of months living uh, in my family's like camper and extra hunting house and stuff like because I, I have a variety of uncles and I have a big extended family here, just not other places. And so that happened. And when I first was coming back to South Dakota, my mom called at one point and after about 40 minutes, I was like, what's this about? <laughs> because I can't tell with her. And she was basically, she was worried about me trying to attend church out here. And I told her, don't worry about it, mom. I'm going to go to church in town. I've already decided. And then I got out here and I did go to church in town for about mm -hmm, three to five Sundays. And I thought that's what I was going to do. And then I was staying way up north because the air conditioner went out at the camper that I was staying at. So I went way up north, which I'm a very rural place. So I was already an hour out of town and I went another hour out of town. And I decided, ah, I'm going to go to the little church here that was my uncle's and I go and it's like the hymns and remind and like I went to the ice cream social 
And like, that was when I felt like I start, I was home, like, oh my gosh, I'm so home. And then I ended up going to the homeschool group because you're staying at a guest house with a two-year-old. What are you going to do? The homeschool group is happening at the summer camp. Why not show up? And then I did that. And then I finally got into my house and I thought I'd just keep going up there. But the Baptist church is like in walking distance in a place where nothing's in walking distance from my house. And I'm like, ah, I'll see how it is. And uh, I have no cost to go other places given they don't find my internet content and kick me out eventually. Um, <laughs> which is a definite possibility. And so now I'm like, have I been a Baptist the whole time? <laughs> I, I looked into um, some history of like what Baptists are and independent Baptists and I've come to a firm conclusion it's pretty much genetic and <laughs> um, it probably isn't Protestantism at all based solely on the fact they don't have enough church history as part of the curriculum to be protesting anything. <laughs> They never were a part of the Catholic Church. They couldn't, yeah. <laughs> and then I, 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 I borrowed this medieval reader from my aunt, and in this medieval, because I was in limbo for three months when I was waiting to, uh, and my aunt, it, everybody up here are avid readers because of the winter. So there's just piles of books in everybody's houses, uh, for the most part, or tractor catalogs. But it's one of those two things, um, and. One of the books was a medieval reader and I'm reading, it's all written from the, pers well, it's not all, but the one that really hit me, there's this, there's a couple of letters written from this perspective of this bishop following these heretics through the woods in Germany. And then they're the Anabaptists and he's talking about the answers that they'll give him. And he's like, and we confronted them on if Mary was the mother of God. And they said to us, if it be your will, sir, as you are our Lord, and just on with these lawyer-like answers about it. And he's like, and we took from them all their possessions and they cared not. And they walked into the woods and immediately joined up with another group of heretics and continued. <laughs> and all I can get is how much I love these Anabaptist people. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> and, and then I think about the churches out here. Like I didn't even know there was a bigger church structure because everything is centered from the pastor to the congregation. That's it. That's the whole world. Yeah. And then I find out that's just being an independent Baptist probably. And then I find out a bunch of the Baptists just dropped the Baptist name when they dropped the dress code because they wanted more people to show up. And so I still don't feel like I can make the professions of faith because I'm still really concerned about accidentally lying, but I've pretty much been a Baptist the whole time. Probably, <laughs> if you're just watching my actions, definitely feel like River is the only valid baptism. That's never went away. Can't feel, you know. And technically, I was baptized when I was four in the Belfouche by a minister who can confirm this. So they can't get rid of me. So that's anyway, and I knew you'd be interested in this because most people haven't come back, but maybe I'm just, I, I really feel like everybody who has a problem with the church should just go to the closest church to them and just stay there with their problem. Um, yeah. That's probably the that's not a bad idea. <laughs> church is still hard, right? Like, we're talking like super young earth creationists and people that purposefully forced the local gas station that's had a help wanted sign up for years to not have a liquor license so they can't make more money so they can't afford to hire a new tire guy and they're talking about how successful and great it was for the community and i'm just like i'm trying to start a business next to that gas station <laughs> <laughs> what business are you trying to start I, I rent space, so I'm trying to uh, rent two spaces for uh, either temporary or short-term living, and then one space um, that used to be a coffee shop, 
and I it needs serious renovations and I've been I've been working on it for a year and I'm not done I'm trying I'm continuing through I've I went from trying to educate myself on how to put in floors to educating myself on basics of business and now to like another level of like the business stuff and um I've found that the national average for setting up rentals with uh, the need renovations is three years. So first year, nothing done is right on schedule. Well, in terms of the Anabaptists and the medieval reader, I've got some bad news for you. Yeah. The, most Baptists in America are not Anabaptists. I mean, those are the Mennonites. That's Julian and his yeah. people, and the Amish. And <laughs> except that my friends are, or my my parents, some of their best friends are Mennonites. Oh, and they're the the pastor that baptized me taught at the Hutterite community. Oh, well, for, maybe, maybe not Mennonite. Are. Maybe they're both Hutterites. But yes, and then my mom is specifically. Pennsylvania Dutch. Well, yeah, that's that's the real thing. Um, then. so yes and no at the same time. Well, well, let's I mean the idea of going to the closest church to you is is not it's not a common idea, but there are others out there that do it that I know and and take on exactly the um the attitude that you just expressed that um and, and then people will usually have sort of parameters for that i mean will they will they sit with the mormons will they sit with the jehovah's witnesses i mean that you, you like to try to escape all of this stuff but almost everybody sort of has their parameters about you know how far they'll take that and and how they'll define a church um what what so but but you're also i mean it's interesting because you were you you probably more than anyone were and i'm not saying this in any way being defensive or i mean but you you expressed very clearly and i thought very well the challenge of art in protestantism because my guess is the baptist church they're pretty plain um, it's super complicated because, um, so I did a, a mural in one of the other churches that my family goes to out here and the people at the Baptist church like it. Um, but then on the other hand, if you could imagine me putting the dog headed book on the internet as well as my more recent series of psychic space dragons, nerve wracking, right? <laughs> because I like this church. I want to stay there. I want my son to grow up there. He likes the other kids at that church, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I know for a fact, I must not ever teach at a Sunday school. Yeah. I must not ever be at a VBS because if someone pushes me, I'm not going to lie to them. And being silent is as good as telling them the truth because they just don't take that as an answer. So I will have to just see how it plays out. I I hope that as one of the dog-headed people desperately hoping to trim rose bushes, they don't decide to pour hot oil on me. But it's an option. <laughs> oh, Sally Joe. <laughs> What an interesting journey that you've had, but there are a lot worse things than having an interesting journey. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, it is. Um, so you're, so you're settling down. This is where, this is where you want your, your son to grow up. This is the church you want your son to grow up in. Yep. Yep. I want to manage to stay, um, consistent if yeah. I have that option. Um, like I went to Awana's like there, like I, I did that. Um, I didn't understand why we left. I sort of have ideas why we left. Um, partially it was my dad, like part of why we didn't pursue going back. I'm sure 
was my dad getting the option to be the temporary preacher that lasted way longer. Like that was part of us not going back. Um, and we still would go to like sing inspirations and hymn sings and that. And it's crazy because I'll listen to the congregation and I'll be very frustrated, but I love the hymns. I love it. I yeah. love the potlucks. Yeah. I love the culture. And it's like, how can I love the culture this much when I'm so angry about it? <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I do. And yeah. And, and I've been needing to be back rural for years. Like yeah. there's a different rhythm to life that my brain is lower anxiety because this is the rhythm that I view it's normal. And without that, I was always strained. And so it's helped massively in a lot of domains. Yeah. Well, and, and I, you know, I very much understand. I, I, I still regularly get comments and notes from people asking when I'm going to uh, join the Orthodox or the Roman Catholic. And I keep telling them it's not going to happen. Um, now, if the Christian Reformed Church ceases to be, I'll probably just go wherever my tribe goes because they're my people. That's that's the thing the the well and then I've noticed too and this is sneaky the people doing stuff in our space that are just willing to go for it without a higher authority telling them that this is cool I find that they're historically baptist or have baptist influence and I'm like that makes sense <laughs> and it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. This is just something I'm observing. Yeah. And it's like, it's not Protestant. It's just a willingness to do because you feel like you ought to. And, and it makes you vulnerable, right? I think mm. that's why Baptists are very vulnerable to charismatic speakers mm. because they don't wait on authority. Yeah. Um, so I see why it can be bad. But much like the Pentecostal church, it's also a willingness to go against the grain. And like, I see the value in it too. Um, yeah, it, it'll just, I don't know if it'll play out that I can go there indefinitely, but yeah. I'm giving it a shot. Yeah. 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 No, I hear you. And um, I would imagine there's not a, uh, there's not an Orthodox church very near you where you're at anyway. There is a Russian Orthodox church in the Black Hills, and they have the same problem a lot of the Catholic churches are about here, where they have to share priests. And um, so the Sunday, I was visiting one, one year, and I decided to find out while I was still going to the other Orthodox church, and I attempted to go, and the Sunday I attempted to go, they didn't have a priest for it, and so they were closed. Um, but I don't uh I I don't have the desire and I'm still very enamored with the art. I still love the symbolic world and like I think those images are better to be in consciousness than marketing. And you're gonna have some kind of imaging in consciousness. Yeah. yeah. So um but also I kind of view some of my artwork now as a more protestant more secular parallel to the symbolic world stuff that jonathan yeah. pazio is doing yeah um which means i have to operate outside of structure which is like it'd be real nice to have like a, a magazine of protestant symbolic art but that's not gonna i don't know where that uh, is. it might happen i mean i mean protestants are weird that way they're the they're sort of the experimental fringe of the church and yeah. so yeah and you know and it's also it's also the case that especially in rural churches and even in baptist churches there's there's always a few people that just don't fit in but they're 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 people still and well, part of my delay on doing this with you was i have been attempting to meet with my pastor and try this with him for like seven months um but i haven't succeeded he's very interesting he is a uh converted from catholicism and 
he isn't from out here. He is a National Guard chaplain in the Black Hills who works the Black Hills suicide hotline the rest of the year or the rest of the week. And so that's fascinating. And he's read something other than Moody Bible Institute works, yeah. which yeah. I couldn't believe it. But the I think the first or second Sunday I was there, he mentioned he had read Atomic Habits. And not that that's like a marker of anything specific, but it was so exciting to me <laughs> because self-development books that aren't from an ordained source for, by a, that a pastor's read and will admit it. And I couldn't believe it. So yeah, I, I and then just the fact that he has that service member despair overlap um i hope he lives a long time <laughs> wow wow you know part of me though isn't surprised again because of, of just how the world is i mean the, the world is always surprising and someone coming into that little Baptist church, not knowing anything, will imagine not to find you there, but there you are. Yep. Yeah. And and that's what I that's what I discover in churches all over the place. And you know, I was talking to um, uh, Dr. John. Um, he's not Dr. Jim. Dr. Jim is the cardiologist in Idaho. Dr. John has been on my channel before he grew up in his father was a radio minister for the Arabic speaking world. And so he grew up in Christian reform land, South Chicago. And, you know, I got a chance to reconnect with him at the Thunder Bay conference. And he told me a lot more of his story. And, you know, there, there are some people out there that have very regular predictable stories and God bless them. That's often what they want. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a nice, plain, uneventful, um, steady story. But there are a lot of other people out there that have stories that just go all over the place. And you can find these people in churches and they might look at you and say, I don't know if I match the church I'm in, but these are my people. And um, we, you know, we worship God together. And it's not a bad thing. No. No, it's uh it's very odd, but it's not bad. Good. Good. Well, thank you for the update. Um yeah. I'm sure people will be quite interested in it. Do you want to talk about your art at all? Or I mean, where what's um, the state of that? Well, uh I sort of had to put it off while I've been trying to start this business, but then I decided Thunder Bay was too irresistible. And I, I've spent quite a bit of time pursuing what I considered like what a real artist would do mm -hmm. and trying to do galleries and trying to do these things. And then I had sort of let that go and did my YouTube channel, but I was still doing oh, I'll do my artist talks and I'll be a real artist stuff. And then the Bastions of Beauty group, um, which I've been a terrible member of because I barely listened to any of the pre stuff and I haven't been to meetings in a while, but I sort of got encouraged um, to do more of my cartoons. Okay. And it's strange because cartoons are the oldest thing. I've done cartoons before I did anything else. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a lot of my paintings even were little narratives. Mm -hmm. And then I came across this little, this little format of doing these eight pages. And this is all the more narrative I usually have. Um, so I'm trying, it's sort of like writing haikus because you have this constraint and it's this wonderful constraint that brings everything together. So I actually think I have two more of these little books in my head already. And they're not even about the dog headed. And then this medium works very well for making products that are print on demand, which yeah. is no overhead. And I can just set them up and hope they'll be popular someday. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I've done this one. I have another one that's the road to Avalon that I really want to write. And then I have Psychic Space Dragons, which is a, we haven't quite worked out the narrative for that. Well, They're more Pokemon card, but. For, for those, for those who, um, for those who pull out the cross at Harry Potter, Psychic Space Dragons are going to be quite the stretch. <laughs> psychic space dragons is mark i can hijack the yoga promotional algorithm by saying this is not the red chakra dragon it will not help you in this and this and this and it's working because i see it when the other chakra stuff comes up and it's basically i i couldn't res i have to like i have to i've always needed to have to do these fun joke things and i like them and the good thing is, if they're not popular, then nobody buys them, and then they don't exist. So that's easy, and I can just have fun in the meantime. All right. All right. Well, I think that's a good update. And um, Yeah? Yeah, I think it's a good update. I, I, it's, it's, the nice thing about talking to randos on the internet is that they're very real. And I'm trying to come home and stay real. Yeah. Well, and you're very real, Sally Jo. I have found that I had things that I thought I was over because I left them at 19. And now they've just defrosted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's not bad. It's not like I needed to leave them forever. Like, I need to just something them. But... Anyway, which that was a surprise because I thought I was more mature and actually a bunch of me was just not yet dealt with. And so that's been, things have been much better and much worse in multiple ways that I didn't think possible. What what decade are you in? Are you in your 20s or your 30s? I am 36. Okay, so you're in the middle of your 30s. Yeah, there's there's really something to the decades in terms of dealing with stuff. I mean, not in your twenties, you're still kind of just usually going through life. You're not sort of fully aware yet. You get into your thirties and you start to gain perspective and you start to see things and, and you're seeing them now. I mean, you're doing, you're doing the work of the thirties right now, which is, which is what you ought to be doing. So well, thanks. <laughs> I'm in my 50s. I'm almost in my 60s uh, now. I don't know what the work of the 60s is yet. I'm not quite there yet. So I've I've been learning the work of the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really amazing how you can feel behind in your own life. And I've felt that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe that's just the age. Yeah. So, so shoot me an email with any links that you want to go with this and, um, sure. Sure. and I'm sure, I'm sure folks will be really happy to get the update. Of course, Mark was promoting the heck out of your stuff at, up at Thunder Bay and making sure that nobody left there without anything. And, um, um, no, I've, uh, I've made some good friends somehow. Oh, Mark's, a, Mark's a great guy. I know. I know. Again, like I said, at the beginning, he annoys some people, but, um, he is, uh, he's got a good heart. And a good head and he is a good guy and um he, he's yep. just uh he's just uh low in agreeableness like it seems a lot of people in this little corner of the internet <laughs> yeah me and me and manuel mark was saying something in fact like why why do i put up with you guys and that we're like you came here after us you're <laughs> the crazy one for staying <laughs> <laughs> that's true mark is mark is a late comer he's a late comer anyway all right sally joe thank you for for letting me update people and continuing to do this so diligently yeah send uh send me a link to you know any people want to see your art or they want to find your channel or if you don't want that stuff out don't tell me send me anything but just send me no links i'll to... send it okay yeah Real good. All right. All right, Sally Joe. Good talk. Have a to great you. day. All right, you too. Bye bye.